Dear colleagues, welcome on the presentation of newly created consultory advisory boards and the Ministry of Defense, uh, Public Anti-Corruption Council and Office for Support of Changes and press conference on this matter. Today here with us we have Minister of Defense of Ukraine Alexei Reznikov, Yulia Maroshevska, the head of Office for Support of Changes, Arsen Zhivodilov, the head of uh, team for procurement office, Yevhen Hrushovets, uh, head of public anti-corruption council, and uh, Anastasia Shuba, deputy of uh, head of public anti-corruption council, will present with us today. After conference, you will be able to ask questions. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, we already talked about uh, uh, the matter of our meeting, and we will shift uh, to this matter, but now I would like to briefly uh, talk about where we were and where are we now and uh, toward what direction are we going to move to uh, picture logics of our actions and our intents uh, and then it will be understandable why we are doing something or why not. Uh, so to recall, uh, since uh, the last year, since the beginning of this invasion, when hybrid warfare shifted to uh, full-scale uh, warfare, our task was to survive, uh, survival of uh, people, of nations, of uh, personalities, families, and it was priority number one. Uh, in order to reach this objective on the level of uh, defense and security sector, uh, the primary objective was weaponry. Uh, you all remember that uh, uh, 261,000 of people were the number of service people in the armed forces of Ukraine as of 1st of January. Later on we added 11,000. Uh, but since the decision making uh, of the parliament based on uh, provision of the National Defense and Security Council, we uh, set martial law and mobilization of people and we face the challenge of scaling of everything. Number of personnel inside uh, defense uh, sector, national guard, uh, national policy, security service, defense intelligence, bodyguard service uh, and so on. And uh, in this matter we were talking about um, clothing, uh, nutrition, weaponry, weaponry and weaponry. And if you remember, since the beginning, on the beginning, our partners have been preparing us for uh, guerrilla warfare. We've been talking about uh, short-range uh, weaponry. We were happy about stingers, javelins, and enlows and purions. Nowadays, we already made clearly fix uh, that on our armament we have uh, heavy weaponry 155 uh, HIMARS armed vehicles of uh, probably all main types uh, and configurations we have tank uh, coalition we have patriots on combat duty nevertheless uh, uh, orcs uh, were just crying out loud about this matter that God forbid patriots in Poland and it will, it will be uh, crossing of the borders and red lines by west uh, nevertheless, today we have borders of uh, NATO and Russia. They've expanded uh, via Finland, which uh, took its place in NATO. Nowadays, uh, NATO countries uh, provide us with aviation of Soviet sample, but I am sure that uh, in future we will talk about future fighter jets, as we now are talking about Patriots and Heimers. So if we are talking about uh, Santa wish list, uh, uh, we have aircraft and probably uh, Death Star, if we are talking about the remaining positions. Uh, so, in terms of uh, tasks and objectives, we are close to sailing because all modern systems are being mastered by our service uh, people on the training fields of our friendly countries, uh, United Kingdom, Poland, uh, Slovak Republic, Germany. Our service people are going there and instructors of foreign countries are very proud of uh, our service people and they are dreaming about the service people coming back to their countries and talking about their experience. Therefore, I consider that uh, we passed this year quite successfully and we have to define new objectives because we are in this race. Uh, 
and uh, the main objective for the Ministry of Defense as of today is to increase efficiency of the defense to reach the victory of Ukraine to get the borders uh, as of 1991 and set such type of uh, defense capability of Ukraine which will be able to resist even willing of the Russian Federation to take revenge. Uh, we are not talking about uh, one more attempt uh, to invade. The main priority is uh, our defenders, both female and male, uh, protection of their health. And uh, in this case, we are talking about weaponry, about training, about maintenance of this weaponry and repairment, because all of this is related to lives which we are, will be able to save. As many lives we save, as uh, more resilient is defense of our country. Therefore, today our task also includes increasement of uh, efficiency of resources which provide our armed forces with uh, all necessary. Uh, therefore, today uh, our agenda is uh, reforms, even during warfare. It means that we should not stop and we have to move and implement these reforms. And I think that in future we will understand that it is quite easy to do. Therefore, today, considering this matter, we have already announced uh, our agreement with uh, NSPA, that's a uh, NATO system for procurement uh, in uh, special agencies. Uh, our negotiations were uh, successful, and uh, after meeting with Jens Stoltenberg, we proclaimed uh, a matter of so-called green light, and I have hope that uh, uh, during the Vilnius summit, uh, we will have national procurement review in uh, our agenda. That's a system which stands for analysis and audits for all types of procurement. That's simultaneous training of specialists which are dealing with this matter in the system of Ministry of Defense and the set point in case of detection of uh, some moments which are to be approved or maybe uh, some misleads which uh, should be removed, uh, then we will talk about recommendations uh, uh, on changes of procurement system. Therefore, we will enjoy this program, I have no doubt, and uh, it would be a great added value moment for us. Moreover, it will be one more systematic step which makes us closer to the euro participation in the alliance because de facto we are already there and that's not a secret uh, therefore in order not to stop we took a decision and uh, i approved establishment of some very important structures and uh, agencies uh, maybe bodies if i may uh, tell so and in world body I see several meanings uh, because uh, as you know I'm dealing with uh, diving and there is an important moment body that's uh, uh, your friend or comrade because uh, you may not move down water without body uh, therefore I think that uh, we have quite good uh, beginning with uh, two structures uh, which will be uh, bodies for Ministry of Defense one is office for support of uh, changes. The leader is uh, Miss Yulia Maroshevska uh, with quite powerful team. Uh, Arsen Zhevodilov is also here. Uh, there are not all people who are involved in this process. Uh, and as of today, one of the main tasks of uh, this office to help us with the unbiased view uh, which is uh, not blighted by some bureaucracy or some regulations to help us. You remember 19th uh, chapter of uh, our Constitution uh, that uh, all uh, agencies are um, fixed with some obligations and for office we have task to look out of frame and to offer us some new ideas uh, here we count on uh, experience of Orsen uh, who uh, worked with Ministry of uh, Healthcare and who passed through military service and he understands needs of the armed forces of Ukraine 
that is one direction. The second direction, you know that if we are spreading provision tasks, there are two main tracks. The one is armament and military equipment, and the second one is provision of resources. Uh, earlier we used uh, to use rare support, but I don't like it because we don't have rare during uh, uh, open phase of warfare because even in Ujhara there is a front line and uh, even a uh, missile attack this night caused a tragedy in Uman. Yesterday I've attended uh, Sumy and I met some citizens and they are dealing with this threat every day. Nevertheless, they don't have front line there as of this moment. Therefore, we are talking about uh, two agencies. Uh, one agency which is already dealing with armament and military equipment and they already have some good contracts with French Teles and Nexter, with uh, German Rain Metal, uh, with Babcock and Biosystems. The second agency will deal with uh, resource uh, supply uh, it's uh, only on the beginning, we don't have personnel and a lot of other solutions and Office of Changes will uh, provide uh, its ideas in order to make this agency work in the proper way. Correspondingly, I have uh, personnel um, weights and requirements uh, to every member of this office. Uh, we discussed with them their areas of responsibility and I wish them luck and I'm sure that we will have this success. Uh, the second important block is creation of uh, Public Anti-Corruption Council. You heard a lot about this because uh, the matter of fact uh, was quite public. They were happy people and they were unhappy people or even angry people. Uh, all of this was discussed uh, uh, and that is quite normal because we are living in democratic country. Uh, the main matter is that the voting uh, was uh, done in accordance with um, those requirements from the working group. We didn't involve in this process. Uh, approximately 1,000 people voted for different positions and I think that that's very important step and here we have uh, head of uh, Council Yevhen Hrushovets and Ms. Anastasia Shuba as the uh, uh, deputy head. Uh, they will tell you about all of this in more details later on and about team. If we are talking about the third uh, block or part, uh, it uh, is about uh, military medical supply, uh, not in terms uh, of um, any medical support to our wounded people because uh, our heroes are being cared and they are coming back uh, to the combat lines, uh, but procedures and uh, procedures concerning medical support uh, many people are uh, angry and unsatisfied about this. Uh, there is an abbreviation WELCA, which, is, which might be deciphered as Military Doctor Commission. And we are trying to deal with this because we used to have a reform of military medicine and military medicine shifted from the umbrella of the Ministry of Defense to the umbrella of the Medical Forces Command. Nowadays, this command is being headed by our Major General Tatiana Ostashenko. Uh, she was able to fix all this system, just fantastic system with all civilian establishments. Uh, we may deliver our wounded uh, person to both uh, military hospital or civilian hospital and then doctors are fighting uh, for health uh, of uh, this person. Uh, therefore, today we are trying to increase our responsibility in this matter because in accordance with law we perform uh, democratic civilian control over the armed forces and nowadays uh, we are trying to figure out because uh, we have uh, a matter of simplification of several procedures uh, via digitalization 
uh, here we have hands of help uh, of our friendly uh, ministry headed by Mikhailo Federi, Ministry of Digitalization. We are waiting for some product from them, but it doesn't mean that we are waiting and doing nothing. Therefore, we uh, reacted on a huge amount of requirements and requests from uh, NGOs and other organizations who are dealing with support of uh, our defenders. We look through lists of uh, their recommendations, offers and points. We conducted a meeting with them uh, probably representatives of uh, 42 organizations and we decided that we will create permanent working group on the Ministry of Defense. Maybe later on it will be also institutionalized uh, as it was with uh, working group for anti-corruption and it was turned uh, to anti-corruption council. Uh, we uh, had conversation with Yulia Poyevska, or maybe you know uh, her as Tyra. Uh, she agreed uh, to head this group and to work on uh, different offers together with uh, those people who will join them. Uh, simultaneously, I ordered uh, Deputy Minister Hanna Mahler and uh, uh, Ms. Tatiana Stashenko to uh, ride through important places where we have high tension. Uh, area. First of all, we are talking about frontline, uh, correspondingly all uh, military doctor commissions uh, which are being placed uh, along the front line should be checked and uh, I have to receive a report about what is happening and about needs. We were already took a decision about increasement of number of military doctor commissions facilities uh, alongside the front line in order to allow our wounded personnel to address to these establishments on both territories of uh, military and civilian medical establishments because uh, for us it is very important not only solve matters of golden hour when we evacuate our personnel from the front line but later on as well. Moreover, while my uh, provision. Uh, we are going to uh, involve uh, and open positions for psychologists on all medical establishments because that's uh, mistreatment uh, that uh, wounded service person should be treated psychologically after treatment medical. Uh, to sum up, I would like to say that uh, we are going to uh, implement and expand the principle of involvement of different domains uh, because in this case we are able to talk about different views and different uh, expertise uh, and in this way we will be able to provide uh, for different matters on horizontal level and later on our main task will be vertical level to implement all of this. Therefore, for us, it is very important to understand that we resisted, that we didn't fall in three days as it was uh, anticipated for us. Uh, and I think that the most a uh, valuable reason for this is the uh, capability of Ukrainians to be united for different purposes for our joint uh, matter. So now I'm taking a pause and uh, Miss Yulia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you for representation and for such bravery. Uh, and. Uh, um, for me, as for every Ukrainian, defense uh, domain is uh, key as of today. Uh, it is a unique capability to bring historical changes into this domain. Uh, these are changes which should provide for resistant institutions will, which will guarantee our victory and security in future in Ukraine and in the region at all. If we are talking about Office for Support of Changes, that's a consultative advisory board uh, under the Ministry of Defense and as I see the main function is to involve best experts and best professionals to uh, this 
agency in order to use this expertise uh, for improvement of the Ministry of Defense and all related structures. For us, it is very important not to create endless uh, strategies and talks and uh, discussions for us it is important to have changes therefore we are naming this uh, office accelerator of changes uh, our approach is to move step by step when we take separate change or separate project and we are establishing team from the best experts from ukraine or maybe foreigns uh, to improve this change and in this way step by step change by change we hope to create fundamental changes uh, in the structure of the ministry of defense of ukraine uh, the first project is reform of procurement that is exclusively about those uh, nomenclature which is not lethal and as a result of this project uh, uh, the agency for procurement should be created it will help uh, let me see, say to divide those functions uh, which are inside the ministry because nowadays they, these uh, functions are concentrated in one department. That's uh, policy creation. These are norms, uh, rules of games, uh, how to deal uh, with uh, procurements. And we want uh, to take this brain for policy development and leave it to the Ministry of Defense, but take the process of procurement to the agency, to a professional body, which will consist such people as uh, Artem, uh, those people who already have this experience, uh, who are able to analyze uh, market, to uh, provide uh, best uh, Ukrainian representatives and world representatives to enter this market and provide uh, our troops uh, with uh, uh, different um, goods by the best conditions. Our objective as of today is uh, to create our vision how to establish this agency and how to launch it. And in this matter I hope for support of the Ministry of Defense, of uh, uh, our parliament uh, and government and Verkhovna Rada in order to launch this agency which should be a pilot project of uh, the office. Uh, I will tell you step by step about other projects. Uh, uh, nowadays we are analyzing the most urgent problems, but also those problems where we have uh, expertise and professionals who are ready to launch it, to implement, to enter the system and show the result. I will give the floor to our sent to uh, let him talk about procurement procedure and his view on this reform. Thank you, Alexei Yuryevich. Thank you, Yulia. My name is Alexei Zhevodielo. Before the March of last year, I was the head of state uh, enterprise for uh, procurement of uh, um, medical forces, and uh, I was mobilized afterwards. What is the idea? It is very simple. And it stands for the matter of fact that uh, uh, procurements uh, nowadays and um, all those uh, matters and issues which are arising inside the society today, it looks uh, like Ministry of Defense is establishing rules and afterward the ministry itself is realizing and implementing everything via these rules and we don't have any control. So our proposition is uh, to create a targeted operational model which uh, has the following uh, view. I hope that uh, our ideas will be implemented uh, faster than we are shifting the slides. So our operational model, uh, Ministry of Defense should focus on uh, policy development, on understanding of uh, what uh, should be provision for the armed forces, why with one or another thing and why we not with uh, uh, something else, and understanding of uh, obligations and responsibilities of all interested sites, 
and also establishment of uh, requirements to all representatives. For example, with zero tolerance to corruption, with provision of uh, permanent processes with transparency for society. The second point is realization of uh, policy. Here we should not have Ministry of uh, Defense. Realization of politics uh, should be down to the general staff, to the armed forces and to those units, we, units which are establishing needs. What is need established? That's a requirement and request uh, from the unit with what they need and later on they send this uh, request to a specially created procurement agency which has all necessary resources including human resources which will provide for qualitative procurement uh, with zero tolerance to corruption, with good timing and with good uh, expertise in order to deliver everything in time. Uh, nowadays we are talking uh, about uh, fulfillment, about meaningful uh, fulfillment of uh, this agency because we have to uh, create a legal base uh, for this uh, agency on the level of Cabinet of the Ministers of Ukraine and Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Uh, we have to uh, create different procedures in order to uh, make this agency respond to all those standards uh, which are functioning in this domain. So in this case, the Ministry of Defense will focus on first and second f and third phase on monitoring and control. The third phase is monitoring of implementation of everything uh, decided by this agency. Uh, therefore, we plan and we hope for support from all sides of uh, executive uh, power to launch this agency in the nearest future. Thank you, Yulia. Thank you, Arsen. So, to sum up, uh, the main result of this block not all office, but uh, only one project about which Arsen was talking, is to divide direction of resource provision to leave the Ministry of Defense inside the department with, department with functions of uh, establishing of needs establishing standards, establishing other politics and requirements, and later on control over quality. And separately we will have commercial, de facto commercial structure, which implement, implementing these standards and requirements to rules and quality, uh, efficiently using state uh, money, will provide for this need, provide uh, for services and moreover our admission which we discussed with uh, uh, Mr. Arsen uh, is going out of framework of provision for the armed forces exclusively. I believe that we will create the best agency with best service and then as representatives of defense uh, uh, sector will also be willing to use this experience and ask for different staff of uh, resource provision beginning with fuel, gear and other resources. I know about such examples in uh, friendly countries. I've discussed this with uh, my colleagues uh, in friendly countries. Uh, we had our team sent to Norway and to different other countries where the service agency of the Ministry of Defense provides for uh, different services uh, for National Guard and other agencies and now I will shift to the right side of the table and I will give floor to Mr. Rivhan Hroshevets and Anastasia Shuba to let them represent the second part of this body. 
Thank you. Uh, I will represent myself briefly. Uh, my name is Yevhen Hrushovets. I am head of Anti-Corruption Council and near me I have Anastasia Shuba, uh, deputy of the head and also other representatives of Anti-Corruption Council uh, present uh, in uh, this room, uh, which the council consists of 15 people. Uh, we are very different and uh, I would say that it is not easy for Anti-Corruption Council to take decisions, but uh, these decisions are concentrated and every decision should bring about its result. Uh, voting for members of Anti-Corruption Council was opened and launched in Prozoro. Mr. Uh, Minister told that uh, um, there are uh, some dissatisfied people and uh, uh, I should say that as of today more than 40,000 of people among which both uh, civilian and military citizens of Ukraine delegated these authorities to those people in anti-corruption council and every member of this council uh, bears personal responsibility uh, in front of uh, not only military but also in front of civilian people. As of today, uh, Anti-Corruption Council is facing a lot of questions and a lot of challenges and as far as, as I understand after a uh, speech of Yulia and Arsene, we will try to control uh, you as well and your agency. At least we will try to do it, but the key accent should be on procurement and on procedure. And our view of all members of Anti-Corruption Council is not to uh, fight with outcomes of different publications, but we would like to have a direct immediate contact on those processes which are already ongoing if we are talking about procurements, we would like to understand how it is going and how it will go. And a lot in this matter depends uh, on positions of the Ministry of Defence, because on the previous meeting, uh, authorities of the Ministry of Defence told us that we will have the green light. Anti-Corruption Council uh, prepared the first uh, request, we send it to everybody accessible and uh, uh, I think that the, in the nearest future we will be able to receive answers and analyze if there were some uh, violations or not because uh, uh, it may seem as a simple question but indeed it is a difficult question. Our council created permanent commission uh, where we will spread different directions and I think that my colleague Anastasia Shuba will tell in more details uh, but key point is that we don't need uh, hype, we don't uh, need uh, unhappy uh, publications or articles but we want to have an impact on future result and I hope that we will have leverages because as of today a lot of people are quite uh, skepticists about uh, anti-corruption council because we know that uh, in Ukraine uh, uh, there are a lot of agencies dealing with corruption or anti-corruption but we hope that we will uh, have an access to everything needed for us and we will be able to uh, perform all necessary tasks and we are going to do everything in order to uh, satisfy a request of the society in terms of improvement of efficiency of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine activity and I hope that uh, we will gain victory and and uh, we will dive somewhere. No, my idea is to dive on uh, Moscow cruiser. I invite everybody. So we take this uh, invite. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to uh, say thank you that due to your political will, we were able to create uh, this uh, agency which um, I hope, and not only I, but also all my colleagues in Anti-Corruption Council hope that all those uh, success stories which uh, we will be able to demonstrate will be multiplied 
and we will have this political will uh, from uh, other heads of uh, our ministries and agencies. We are going to be institutional reinforcement of the Ministry of Defense because I should say that uh, we are not paid for this activity. We are uh, dealing with this uh, during our spare time uh, because uh, that was uh, our conscious decision that uh, everybody should help in more systematic way because among us we have uh, volunteers who help uh, us uh, since 2014. Uh, we have uh, professional lawyers, IT specialists, auditors and this pool of people will help us to provide uh, qualitative um, expertise for the Ministry of Defense uh, yes, we are uh, consulting an advisory board, but we hope that those recommendations which we will provide for the Ministry of Defense will be a mechanism which will decrease this level of tension in society and uh, also it will uh, crystallize uh, in the Ministry of Defense zero tolerance to corruption. Uh, as Johan told, uh, we are different indeed. And so uh, when we have decision-making process, we have a lot of uh, discussions, but I should say that these discussions are professional because uh, everybody has uh, uh, their own professional background uh, which allows to uh, have these discussions. And uh, uh, thanks to this, we are able to take uh, uh, meaningful and uh, outright uh, decisions. So we already began uh, our work of uh, analysis and monitoring of uh, rare procurement. I am sure that we will give a report to the Ministry and uh, we will offer particular steps to decrease uh, or um, mediate those risks which we have. Uh, we created uh, three committees. That's a committee for procurement and excuse me, three commissions. Commission for uh, Procurement and Provision, Commission for uh, Legal Base uh, Monitoring, and Commission for Communication, uh, Human Resources Management, and uh, Discussions. I think that names of uh, commissions talk themselves in Commission for Procurement and Provision, uh, we are going to deal with uh, monitoring of uh, tenders and procurement uh, contracts. Commission for Monitoring of uh, Legal Base and uh, Norm Activity is dealing with analysis of those procedures which exist uh, in the Ministry and uh, also to provide some offers in terms of legal base uh, which will help us to deal with those challenges which we are facing. Communication Commission will deal with communication with uh, public agencies, with the uh, ministry, with the uh, expert environment, because uh, via uh, provision on creation of anti-corruption council, we have a right to involve specialists and experts in one or another domain which are able to help us to perform those tasks which we are facing. And in terms of uh, criminal cases, uh, I would like to add, if Johan will allow me, we are not uh, ready to comment uh, on some statements of uh, people and about uh, their point of view. We are ready to work because uh, when you criticize somebody, you should be ready to work. And we have enough expertise to offer positive and meaningful changes uh, in our state. Uh, we are different, but everybody has strategic goal to gain a victory over Russia. I would like to moderate. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Eu Eugene and uh, Ms. Anastasia. I would like to add, uh, while we've been sitting here, I received a list of uh, members of uh, commission. Uh, I made some notes. Uh, I would like to add um, on uh, anti-corruption council because uh, 
it is very important uh, to control your weightings and uh, if your expectations are not satisfied you will be disappointed and it may bring about conflict therefore i am going to sound my expectation uh, and uh, talk about presumable expectation from society, military people and partners. Uh, Miss uh, Anastasia also gave me one good idea and one more expectation raised in my head. My expectation is that it will be very powerful and independent, uh, also accelerator of uh, uh, views and ideas which will help me uh, via taking political decisions, uh, via political will by administrative impact to change the system uh, to the better way. Uh, meanwhile, understanding that uh, our task is uh, not to disrupt uh, stable and unstoppable provision system uh, for the armed forces of Ukraine, especially nowadays uh, during uh, open warfare. And in this matter, I hope for cooperation between uh, uh, Anti-Corruption Council and Office for Support Changes. That's not a matter of control of each other, because in this case, we will need to search for the third party to control your. Your task is to work together and control everything together. They have idea. They will work on procedures, approaches, and system. And your objective is to assess a uh, matter of corruption. Because uh, here I have an uh, idea of a uh, check of uh, um, accounts uh, receivable. And w how is account receivable related to anti-corruption uh, council? Uh, for example, we have current uh, account receivable. Uh, for example, I've paid for harpoons and we will have a result just in two years because that's a matter of development. So with all respect, where have we here any corruption? But meanwhile, it was a matter of business, that's a matter of corruption. So uh, that's just one question rising in my head, uh, and uh, we are going to discuss this. Maybe I'm mistaken, uh, maybe in um, accounts receivable uh, there is corruption risk, and uh, we may work over this matter, you will uh, meet with uh, lawyers, uh, uh, I may even tell you about uh, famous uh, buildings of uh, Maketais. You may go to court uh, to check everything of it, but on my point of view, it is not related to Anti-Corruption Council, because I need your expertise where we have corruption risks and fundamentals uh, for corruption. Uh, I like the uh, uh, name of your three committees or commissions and I like focus of these commissions. I am ready to work with these commissions and I will talk with deputies of ministers, uh, minister. Um, they will work with you as well, uh, but your main focus is sitting in front of you, Mr. Serhi. That's your main partner and also buddy. Work with him and work with me. Uh, expectation of society, on my point of view. We need more transparency and uh, uh, society has a uh, full right uh, to observe and control how public finance is being used because all people are paying taxes and from these taxes we are establishing budget and from this budget we are receiving money to the Ministry of Defense. So we have our country, it is as it is, and uh, we also have villains here. Uh, therefore, transparent, it's, transparency is one of the main element of decreasing of corruption story in any place. Therefore, we are waiting from you that you will provide for more transparency. And simultaneously, I think that society perceive you as representatives of society because they voted for you, they supported you challenge is very serious and responsibility is very serious. The third one is expectation of uh, service people. From one side they will see quality and how money was spent 
I had meeting with uh, our service people in field, with air defense representatives, and I was talking about uh, nutrition with them. They had only one uh, problem, that they have vegetarians, and they need vegetarian menu. That was um, only one claim or complaint. Uh, to my side and then I told that uh, then we need uh, to have different types of menu kosher halal uh, menu or lean menu and that's normal that's nothing special about this but they didn't have a problem with uh, number and quality I been to field to combat positions not in the permanent stations so that's the situation the sad part with expectations is our partners because we have extremely high level of trust which we were able to set therefore we are receiving patriots high mercies mlrs and uh, um, uh, the equipment uh, but there is uh, uh, one nuance that we are receiving all this equipment for free. My point of view is that approximate cost is uh, 80 millions, uh, billions. Uh, so I think that 50 billions is for the United States and 30 billions uh, for other countries and that's a huge amount of money and their society also wants to understand where their taxpayers costs are being sent and they want to see that these costs are being spent in a proper way for this matter we have control systems those money which we spent from Ukrainian budget uh, has nothing to do with them but if they will observe that uh, we are not transparent and we are doing something wrong with our budget, they will decrease their level of trust, their parliaments and governments won't take right decisions and we will not be able to receive this assistance. So I am going to invite representatives of both office and uh, anti-corruption council to meet with uh, our partners to represent your teams and your views because uh, um, here we will bring communication with our international partners via united team with one voice to have this uh, level of uh, support maintained on the high level uh, so uh, an example for press which presents here we launched a project in august uh, with uh, denmark uh, they uh, ordered uh, French systems, so they paid money for this and uh, after uh, finalization of this agreement Denmark uh, had to receive this equipment. Uh, in August we had uh, negotiations uh, with uh, different representatives, it was hard project but nowadays uh, I uh, may tell you that we already have first Denmark scissors produced by French which are being set on the combat duty so that was the matter of level of trust and that's the matter of increasing of uh, uh, combat capabilities of the armed forces of Ukraine and fifth expectation uh, which uh, Miss Anastasia was talking about we may create very successful case and uh, if this uh, uh, anti-corruption council will show breakthrough and that it is a added value for Ministry of Defense for modern civilian structure which is performing civilian democratic control via NATO standards and uh, if we will have improvements of all processes uh, via synergy uh, of uh, society and those uh, public servants who are working uh, in the ministry uh, I think that then we will be able to scale this case inside the Ministry of Defense. Uh, we don't have creation of uh, anti-corruption council uh, in the law. It was my idea and I took it from my previous job when I've been working with uh, Kyiv City Council and I'm sure that if we will be successful in our synergy 
other ministers will be also interested in establishment of such councils under their ministers ministries because every ministry is spending public money for uh, funding of those agencies uh, with which they are working as of today yes ministry of defense is uh, the uh, biggest uh, is the biggest uh, employer uh, in Ukraine. The second place is probably for Ukrainian railways about Ministry of Infrastructure, but we have a lot of such people and I hope that different agencies uh, will be able to use your successful uh, case. So that's one more expectation from you from Anti-Corruption Council and I think that this expectation and scaling is absolutely realistic. So now I am ready to QAA uh, dear colleagues, uh, please raise your hand and uh, uh, name yourself and uh, who are you asking. Uh, Daria Nematsyan, uh, Suspilna, question to Mr. Oleksii in terms of uh, weaponry. Do we have enough weaponry for counteroffensive? Did they give uh, us all promised weaponry? So, uh, I'm going to repeat my question. My name is uh, Daria Nebazian uh, Suspilne. Uh, there's a question about weaponry and preparation to counteroffensive. Uh, have you, has Ukraine already received those weaponry necessary for counteroffensive? There are details uh, which uh, I cannot. Uh, disclose uh, because uh, with all your patriotic positions your article will be read by our enemies as well. So let me say that uh, preparation is being finalized because uh, uh, we should have not only weaponry and military equipment but also our service people should master it. So we received very sophisticated systems uh, in particular Iron Fist uh, if we are talking about Leopard uh, 2 from tank coalitions, challengers and Leopard 1 which will uh, um, join us later on and also we are waiting for Abramses, probably they will not take part in this counteroffensive but our crews are already on training. Meanwhile we have a huge number of different uh, armored uh, vehicles, uh, Bradley, uh, Murder Strikers, uh, C-90, uh, some training are still in process, so equipment itself was proclaimed, was prepared and partly delivered. But there are some types of equipment where our uh, service people are being still trained and they will uh, go to those places uh, figure out by our commander-in-chief. So in general term uh, we are mostly ready. Later on decision will be given to the general staff, to General Zaluzhny and uh, his uh, subordinates uh, as soon as we will have gut will, decision of commanders and whether we will do it. And dear colleagues, I would like to remain that we are talking here about Anti-Corruption Council and Office for Support of Changes. Good afternoon, my name is Olena Rabinska, Faith Channel. I have a question to Public Anti-Corruption Council and Office for Support of Changes. The first one, maybe I didn't hear, but uh, uh, do you have a time frame for your activity and time frame for task performance? Uh, are they planned or that's just uh, and are uh, these advisory uh, councils uh, ready to all the uh, scandals uh, which you may face because we know that when you have responsible people and when you have such a level of different tasks set in front of you, in particular zero tolerance to corruption. Are you ready to this? Because society may rise you up, but at the same time it may rise you down. Thank you for your question. Uh, time frame, uh, you know, we have time frame for yesterday. 
Uh, I'm going to read a request which we've already sent that not later than the next working day since the reception of uh, uh, this request to contact responsible people. So we have responsible people and we have directions uh, by which we are going to perform this monitoring to neutralize all negative outcomes in future and in present. Uh, everybody understands uh, expectation and we ourselves understand that uh, not only one time more we will have attention of journalists uh, given to the Ministry of Defense to procurement and we understand it and we understand that we will already past uh, the tenth part of our time uh, which was necessary uh, for uh, some communication we decided uh, to meet uh, every week uh, with full composition of our council we discuss questions and we are doing everything to show result not some point result but a comprehensive result Thank you for these questions. Uh, in terms of Office for Support of Changes and Launching of uh, Procurement Agency, we have plan of events for this year and for the closest uh, three months. Uh, we already sent it uh, to the Ministry of Defense. Here we have 34 tasks and every task uh, has its own time frame when it should be completed. We are going to inform society on our moment. The next question, please. Anton Kuzakoyan, one plus one. Uh, question to Mr. Oleksy. Mr. Minister, uh, for several times you've already had uh, scandal cases when representatives of uh, um, of a conscription agency use force during their activity. We had several cases. Uh, do you have uh, any reaction from the side of Ministry of Defense and what are the results of previous uh, investigations? Uh, to be briefly, uh, such uh, things uh, uh, may not take place because in law we have uh, particularly information about uh, their activity. Uh, those people from Completement and um, Human Power Centers, uh, they are in the structure of the land forces, uh, of the armed forces of Ukraine, but recently we have uh, assigned uh, First Deputy Minister of Ukraine, Alexander Pavlyuk, he is also military, so his objective is to perform control, not only training centers, but uh, also manning centers, and and uh, Mr. Pavlyuk is uh, systematically dealing with this. And uh, I should say that reform of uh, mining centers is on time for a long period of time. Uh, together with Ministry of Digital Transformation, we are uh, developing uh, Oberich project. Uh, that's a digitalization of uh, different uh, documents. A lot of stuff uh, will be done via digital system if you got married and if you uh, didn't inform a mining center, uh, you are a violator of a law. So I think that uh, we have approximately 90% of such violators. Uh, now we have quite an uh, uh, easy system. Uh, Ministry of Justice is giving us this information. It brings these numbers to the system. So it will be solved. Uh, in terms of many centers, uh, there are a lot of different people. They've been sitting on these positions for a long time. There is an idea of uh, Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the President Volodymyr Zelensky. He gave a recommendation to Commander-in-Chief to uh, Valery Zaluzhny uh, to to send uh, recruiting officers who've been sitting in many centers for a long time to the front line and to change them with those military people who were wounded on the battlefield and who are closely acknowledged with what is happening on the battlefield and they know mobilization need. But if we are talking about facts, uh, everything should be checked by uh, military uh, law enforcement service and if we see some crime in this we give it uh, further 
colleagues, I would like to recall that our matter is Anti-Corruption Council and Office for Support of Changes. Good afternoon, Serhii Gutsenko, author uh, of uh, Naholo's program. Uh, question to uh, Mr. Oleksii. Uh, first of all, I am uh, very grateful that uh, you uh, reacted so quickly on uh, Naholos. Naholos on English is emphasized, on emphasize from our program, because uh, in emphasize we viewed a matter of uh, mobil uh, modernization of uh, defense. And um, it happened that uh, you gave this conference. So I have a question, if uh, are you going to work with uh, society in future? Because uh, we hear that there are some people dissatisfied or people who didn't join this council. I had conversations with different people and some of them told me that a requirement for help to the Ministry of Defense is huge and expert. Uh, environment is not only in this council or somewhere else, it is much bigger. And the second question is, uh, if representatives of uh, anti-corruption council will check their messengers, I send them um, requests and they told that they are go uh, ready to uh, visit our program. Uh, we are going to continue our program, uh, which will talk about borders which we are crossing and steps which we are doing. And uh, one of the matter of this program will uh, be also activity of your ministry. And I would like to invite you to this uh, program. And if you will agree, we may even uh, establish it on weekly basis or meet uh, once uh, per two weeks and discuss everything in expert environment because it is necessary to make everything maximum transparent. Uh, we have enough places. I am ready. I give you a positive answer. Uh, we will uh, give a facility for such uh, expert meetings in this room or in another room. The main objective will be security of participants of these events. I think that representatives of two offices will agree to participate uh, in your program. Invite. Uh, I am going to visit deputy minister, uh, are also going to visit and heads of departments. Uh, so we are transparent and we will go. And if we are talking about those people who applied by uh, didn't uh, go to this council, they are not bad. They just didn't get enough of votes. We are going to cooperate with them. Uh, I think that they will get to know with members of uh, Anti-Corruption Council. They are here for temporarily people, uh, for temporarily time frame, and then we will have another voting for another people. And the main moment is to give trust to this council because that's a positive impact and we should not only show result, we have give this result and we will hear this result f together. So we have to have trust to the system and we should receive it. Good afternoon, Valeria Pashko, Espresso. You already told uh, about armed vehicles, uh, about our people being trained on armed vehicles and what about ammunition? We know that in, United, uh, in uh, uh, European Union uh, uh, people cannot reach an agreement, but it is very important for our armed forces. That's the first question. And the second question is about uh, Vilnius Summit and uh, our objective uh, to uh, receive uh, invitation to NATO, but we clearly understand that we are not going to win the war until the NATO Summit. Uh, will we get this invitation and what challenges uh, may we have on this way? As far as I understand this question to me. so. Briefly, on ammunition, we are trying to accumulate this ammunition together with partners, some on contracts uh, from Ministry of Defense, uh, I mean foreign contracts, some contracts with uh, our uh, domestic uh, 
manufacturers that's a challenge for uh, Ukrainian Oberon Prom. I am not talking only about uh, holding. I am talking about private and state sector, uh, plus uh, military technical assistance. Uh, there are some commitments. Uh, that's a little bit more than commitment. That's a promise and readiness uh, to support us uh, with uh, uh, ammunition, primarily for artillery systems, for armed uh, vehicles and tanks. And discussion which we have now in the European unit, it, is, it has nothing to do with uh, right now. It uh, is dealing with the second topic, which is being discussed permanently, not only during Rammstein meeting, but also during bilaterals. That's unstoppable uh, provision of uh, uh, spare parts uh, uh, to the armed forces, ability to maintain uh, them uh, and uh, ability to give ammunition till the end of this war and end of this war is our victory our partners already trust in it thanks god because they want to be a part of this victory so we already have discussion about launching of uh, production of ammunition in european countries uh, so those uh, um, Number one million uh, one five five ammunition uh, is a long term goal. It doesn't mean that tomorrow you will have uh, this one million of ammunition. Uh, uh, if you're talking about one five uh, two and one two five, capability is uh, fifty thousand per month per uh, former Soviet countries, and that's not a huge number because on the battlefield in one day, in ten days, in month you need a huge number, uh, much more. Therefore, the intent is uh, to provide this million during year. And now they have discussion about where to spend money for ammunition inside the European Union or outside as well. And some, uh, uh, some ministers, my colleagues, are saying that uh, it doesn't matter for Ukrainians where are you going to produce this ammunition. It is only timing which is matter. But as of today, that's not a discussion of permanent moment. In terms of Vilnius, uh, you told about our expectation. We want to receive invitation. Uh, that's an objective of our uh, president. Uh, the topic of open door is uh, quite interesting because doors are open, but how to enter these doors? Uh, we are discussing this with our partners. Uh, we applied and I should say that uh, for decision making uh, about uh, getting country to the alliance uh, we are not talking about number of standards implemented uh, I am asking uh, ministers of defense of uh, friendly countries uh, who joined NATO after 1997 how many NATO standards have you implemented in your country how many legal acts were adopted uh, by uh, this agreement and I would like to recall uh, that there are 1,200 and something uh, standards uh, and uh, majority of countries after 1997 uh, have only 31, uh, 28, uh, 32 percent implemented. There are some countries with 2 percent, with 8 percent. Why? First of all, that's not a very uh, important matter because uh, that's uh, just a road map. Uh, the second point is that uh, not all countries need all standards. For example, if you are inside the Europe, you don't need access to sea and you don't need naval standards. Uh, only those countries which uh, do have uh, access to see they need these naval standards or the same story with uh, space uh, and uh, space activity if you're not doing something in the space you don't need this uh, legal basis uh, we 
are working on these standards. Uh, we uh, adopted approximately 28% of standards, and uh, I have agreements with our partners on 180 standards uh, about which we already know. So just straight away we are moving to the level approximately 40%. That's not principal matter for political decision, but there are three important points. The first one, civilian democratic control over the armed forces in the country, over the defense and security sector, because every country has an objective not to allow for situation in Greece with black colonels, the situation in Spain and so on. In democratic countries you have to have civilian democratic control. We have a law, we have civilian minister. Somebody told that uh, how may you have civilian minister? You may have, because that's how it is being done in NATO countries. We have today one civilian agency and second civilian agency created in order to perform uh, civilian democratic control over the armed forces of Ukraine, for which the task is to defend us and counter this invasion. The second point is transparency uh, and stability and accountability of uh, uh, provision procedure. That's a topic of our today's meeting and we are working on this matter. Therefore, today I may frankly tell you that we've implemented log-fast system, that's a NATO weaponry control system and every uh, defense attaché of uh, partner country may check uh, where is Enlow, Stinger and uh, um, take this information. That's NATO closed uh, and restricted system uh, which uh, have been implemented by our Polish partners for 10 years but uh, we reached uh, command and brigade level and we are going to move to battalion level and we are going to implement subsystem plus those uh, reforms uh, with which uh, our colleagues are going to deal they will also help us to do it and the set point is joint planning of military operation that's a matter of our military guys they are already successfully dealing with with this, they are in consultations with partners how to use uh, weaponry in a proper way. They didn't give us high mercies on the beginning. They gave us later on two high mercies and several missiles and we showed that we are able to use them precisely as a surgeon uses his or her scalp uh, and uh, they gave us more. So these are three points and the decision making about uh, taking Ukraine to NATO will be done after victory. They are not going to do it during the war, but from uh, Vilnius summit I am waiting for a national procurement review because uh, that uh, will be continuation of this second task. Good afternoon, uh, Volodymyr Rubiane, International Agency Bloomberg. Uh, I'm sorry that I have question not by the topic of the briefing uh, to the minister. On the beginning of a negotiation, you told that uh, Patriot systems uh, are already on combat duty. Can you tell how many vehicles and have they already done something, maybe during countering attack this night? Uh, with uh, Irina Zolotara, when we came to this press conference, he told me, she told me that uh, we will have this question about night time. I am not going to tell you if they were used during this night attack, because in this way it will be clearly understandable where this equipment is set. If command of uh, Air Force uh, will decide to talk about this, uh, it will be information from them. Uh, I will tell you about three countries, about the United States, first of all, who took principal decision and training already completed and the system is in Ukraine. I would like to say that it was planned uh, to uh, take 10 months, but our guys mastered these systems in uh, 10 weeks. Also, we received Patriot systems from Germany and Netherlands, uh, but I am not going to tell you about precise number of batteries, excuse me. Good afternoon, my name is uh, uh, Elizaveta. Uh, 
journalist from UNN during commission Ukraine NATO. Secretary General of NATO Jens Stoltenberg told that uh, members of Alliance are working with long term and long year uh, initiative to provide for defense capability and resistance resilience of Ukraine to help it shift from uh, former Soviet Union equipment to NATO standard equipment. What is an initiative and what is the phase of development? Uh, I will briefly uh, explain you because the initiative itself it was launched, but uh, nowadays uh, it has been planned. I think that the most important is not detail. The most important is the matter of fact that our partners finally heard us. Because for a long time, uh, from the very beginning, we've been explaining them that as sooner, as quicker and as more qualitatively, you will equip us as quicker we will uh, perform the main objective of NATO. NATO was created as the main alliance for countering Russian Empire, but during those period of time it was named uh, Soviet Union. That is objective of NATO. How? In case of aggression, in case of uh, usage of weaponry against countries with uh, democratic uh, environment, uh, how to counter this aggression. Nowadays uh, this task is being performed by Ukraine. Therefore, qualitative complement of this tank is good for your countries. As our Estonian friends tell, every in law against Russian tank equals minus one Russian tank on the territory of Estonia. And we are telling them, friends, even after victory, Russians won't change. They should pass through serious evolution, change of regimes, maybe even not of only one regime. It may, means that orcs will remain there. We are European shield. We are those war wall from well-known series on which we are standing and holding defense against orcs. So on the behalf of NATO, in their interest, in, there is a need to equip Ukrainian defense and security sector maximum with uh, modern sophisticated equipment, not with Soviet equipment, to help us with spare parts, ammunition, uh, and the most important, to reach maximum level of interoperability. Membership in NATO of our country or any bilateral cooperation, it is in any case good for them in behalf of their defense capability to reach this level. Therefore, they are not only talking about this, but also doing something with this. Ukar inform Irena Kozohar two short questions. Despite preparation to counter offensive, uh, more and more we have topic of peaceful negotiation rising. Uh, did you express personally uh, this uh, topic and check of Ministry of Defense uh, of Ukraine uh, position uh, during these meetings? And, uh, do you have any communication with Ministry of Defense of China or are you going to plan to conduct it? Thank you. Despite the topic of our today's meeting, topic on peaceful negotiation didn't rise. That's my conscious information. That's fair information. They didn't write this topic with me and uh, nobody is even trying. And I think that uh, they clearly understand that nowadays we are not going to sit at the negotiation table because our president clearly told that nobody from Ukrainian side will sit at the table of negotiation with the head of Kremlin. That's number one. Number two is yes, we are going to sit at the negotiation table when we will discuss contributions and reparations for all those uh, troubles and problems which they brought to us. And we will discuss at the table um, course procedure, international uh, tribunal, capitulation act, acts from uh, side of Moscow. So indeed it is not discussable question. 
it doesn't mean that there are no people willing to be facilitator in this matter, but I think that they clearly understand that it is not time for this. In terms of uh, Chinese defense agency, no, we don't have, we currently don't have such contacts. We will wait. Uh, we have a new ambassador assigned uh, by the uh, president order, Pavlo Rybikin, my recent colleague in the government, uh, as uh, an ambassador of Ukraine in China. He is going to have a difficult mission, but as of today, all impossible mission is possible. Dear colleagues, I would like to recall that today we have a press conference for newly created consultative and advisory borders, public anti-corruption council and office for support of changes. Thanks to our speakers for information.